Hey everyone, it's time for another episode of Science Police. The other day I was reading this paper, Biofunctional Hyaluronic Acid slash Kappa Carrageenan Injectable Hydrogels for Improved Drug Delivery and Wound Healing. It's written by a team of researchers in Pakistan. This group specializes in kinds of polymers, which they call hydrogels or nanogels. And most of their research is looking at the biological applications of these things. For example, delivering drugs to cancer cells or healing skin wounds. Anyway, something caught my attention when looking at figure 5A here. These kind of similar patterns on photos of the agar plates. These plates should have different species of bacteria on them, so it's kind of weird that they would grow in matching patterns at this scale. So I asked the authors if they would share the raw data on my favourite website PubPeer. The raw data would be photos of the whole plates before they were cropped into rectangles for this figure. It's no big deal really because there are a very large number of these issues in published research and it really might not mean anything because a lot of them are innocent mistakes. So I thought nothing of it until I noticed that one of the authors, Mohamed Usman Minas, responded on Papier. Let me read his response. Very strange. A person with fake identity is asking about data. Professionally send your query to corresponding author via email, having your original identity. Corresponding author has all information if you have scientific interest. Of course, this is an enormously frustrating response. It sidesteps the issue and makes a rather pointless and annoying point about anonymity. If corresponding author has all information, it should be rather easy for them to coordinate a response rather than this snide comment. In fact, I think the snide comment would have hit a little harder had it been accompanied with the data. But I think you can guess where this is going. Since Muhammad Usman Minas is an enthusiastic pub peer contributor, perhaps we should take a look at some more of his publications. So I open maybe a hundred or so papers of his from the last five years, and you won't be surprised to learn that his research output is so compromised by serious errors, it's effectively scientifically worthless. This is episode three of Science Police, let's send him to science prison. Now the first thing I want to talk about here are histology images. And these are basically just microscope pictures of tissues taken from organs like the skin, the heart, the liver, and the lungs. When you're doing pharmaceutical development, you might want to see how your drug or substance affects the target tissue. Say you've made some kind of medicine for the liver, you might want to see what microscopic changes happen in the liver. Or you may want to know if the chemical or drug you're developing has some kind of impact on other organs or the animal's health, so taking these microscopic images can be informative. Histology images are created by taking the organ, dehydrating it, setting it in something solid like wax and cutting very thin slices so you can look through them on a microscope. The tissues are usually stained so that different bits show up as different colours. One thing to bear in mind here is that while tissues and histology images can look similar to each other, especially when they show the same organs, on a microscopic level they're all going to be unique. Think of it like cutting a piece of bacon or ham. Every slice has the same features, but the exact arrangement, the size and the orientation of those features is unique to each slice if you spend enough time looking at them. So with that said, here's the first paper published in the International Journal of Biological Macromolecules. There's nothing fishy about this journal, by the way. It's published by Elsevier, which has a... <coughs> it's a <clears throat> has a good reputation, and the journal's been around for nearly 50 years. So the point of this paper is to test an injectable hydrogel laden with curcumin to see if it helps with diabetic wound repair. And to that end, the researchers have taken some histology images of the skin at the site of the wound. Now, if I bring up the overlay, you can see that two of these images actually match between different groups, and these were taken on different days. The amount of magnification is different, but these are certainly derived from the same source. As a bonus here, there's also a matching non-microscopic photograph of a skin wound in part A of figure 9. 
Again, different days and different groups. So there's no way these wounds should be the same. The next paper was published in Frontiers in Chemistry in 2020. The authors were doing some tests on chitosan and xanthan gum hydrogels, and they presented these histology images from a toxicity study. So the left-hand column shows images from the control group, and the right-hand column shows images from the group fed the hydrogel. And the authors concluded that since the organs look similar in both groups, there's no evidence of toxicity from their hydrogel. There's a few concerning issues here. First of all, the heart images are just rotations of the same photograph, and so are the kidney images. The heart image appears to be composed of distinct rectangular blocks as well, which could hint at the involvement of Photoshop, but sometimes it's formatting or compression. The images of the stomach are much worse, though, because they have these repeating elements. I've highlighted a few here. This is really poor behavior. I don't think you can accidentally Photoshop repetitive regions into images like this. Moving on to this 2018 article in the journal Drug Delivery and Translational Research. This time the scientists are looking at a cellulose acetate phthalate based pH responsive hydrogel. And again, they've taken some histology images, this time of mice. And once again, there's an overlap from images that should definitely be unique. These slides from the kidneys and colon should come from mice sacrificed on different days. Next up, we're in the Journal of Drug Delivery, Science and Technology in 2022. Again, the authors are evaluating the toxicity of a hydrogel by comparing slides from a control group with a treatment group. And here we have a pretty significant overlap in the histology image of heart tissue. And for some reason, that's actually a pretty common overlap. I'm not really sure why. Still in 2022, we're going to the Journal of Biomaterial Science and some remarkably low quality pictures. And again, the authors are evaluating the safety of their hydrogel formulation in figure eight here. To be honest, I think the slides from the heart and the liver look very similar. And I doubt these are genuinely derived from different animals, but there's Definitely an overlap in the slide showing the stomach tissue anyway. Back to the International Journal of Biological Macromolecules, still in 2022, and some very similar looking images. That's because most of these were copied from the previous article. We'll come back to this problem in a second. And once again, I'll highlight the overlap in the slides showing the stomach tissue. Okay, so now we're off to the Journal of Applied Polymer Science. This paper was published in 2017, and the authors are evaluating the safety of a potential treatment for colon cancer. In figure 10 here, we have another set of slides related to that safety study. And once again, there's an overlap in the heart tissue. And the next paper is on a similar subject, a hydrogel designed to target colon cancer. This was published in 2018 in Polymer Bulletin. And once again, there's an overlap in the histology image of the heart tissue. Still in Polymer Bulletin, this time in 2020, and it's another different kind of hydrogel for targeting colon cancer. This time there are overlaps in the stomach and intestine tissue slides. The stomach tissue has a different zoom and some slight differences in the lighting. This might be a second photo or perhaps a consecutive slice of the same tissue, but it certainly can't have been derived from a different animal entirely. So the next article was published in the Journal of Polymer Research in 2019. Again, there's an overlap in the safety study images. This one is a little more subtle. It's in part G, which shows images of the intestine. Next up, we're in Polymer Bulletin, again published in 2019. It's another hydrogel designed for delivering oxaliplatin in colorectal cancer. And once again, we've got an overlap in the histology slides for the heart tissue. This is another example where it looks like the slide may have been moved under the microscope slightly. You can tell because this dark spot in the corner is in a different position. Moving on to advanced polymers technology in 2019. And again, it's an overlap in the heart tissue. This one is really quite small, though. It took me a while to spot that. And this 2022 paper in Biomedical Research International has overlaps in both the heart and the liver sections. Again, it's another safety study. This one's on a nanogel. And in 2021, we're in the Journal of Polymers, Plastics, Technology and Materials, another safety study. And this time the overlap is in the kidney slides. In 2018, we have another hydrogel paper in advanced polymer technology and a couple of duplicated images in the intestine this time. And I'm also pretty sure I can see some common elements in these spleen slides, but the area is pretty small and the image quality isn't great. In 2021, we have another nanogel paper in drug development and industrial pharmacy, and the spleen images share a significant overlap here. Back to the polymer bulletin, and the overlap is in the intestine. 
And last but not least, let's take a look at this 2017 article in Advanced Polymer Technology, and there's an overlap in the safety study again in the intestine. So most of these image problems are related to studies where the authors have been feeding their hydrogel or nanogel or whatever it is to one group of rats or rabbits and then comparing the organs to the control group. But over and over again you can see that the images in the control and test groups haven't been taken from different animals. The other major problem I mentioned earlier is that even though these studies are all on supposedly different materials, the same images keep showing up in different papers. Now, this might be less of a problem if the authors reuse slides from their control groups because, in theory, healthy tissue should look the same no matter what. Although that may still be a problem because it wouldn't really be a controlled experiment anymore. But what we actually see in these papers is that multiple images from different test groups show up in papers evaluating the safety of different hydrogels. Sometimes the control images are reused as test images in other papers, and sometimes the test images are used as control images. Now, I'm not animating another series of copied images, so let me just zoom out and show you the relationships between the papers we looked at so far. And you should bear in mind this isn't the full extent of the problem, because I'm only showing you a subset of the copied images I've identified here. I left this comment on Papier, for example, showing all the times that these histology images of skin show up in different articles. Now I focused on these microscope pictures here because it's a visual thing, it kind of works in a video. These are mistakes that are quite easy to pick up and talk about. Of course there are a ton of other different kinds of images, spectra, tables and data reported too, and these have problems as well. There are duplicated photos of the hydrogels themselves and problems with the particle sizes, but it's generally not worth the effort analyzing these things because I could spend the next several weeks picking apart problems of axes and scale bars, digitizing charts, comparing tables of data between papers, but I'll probably get absolutely no response for doing it, or if I'm lucky, maybe another comment along the lines of professionally send your query to corresponding author via email having your original identity. So anyway, Mohammed Usman Minas is joining Dr. Alam Gear in science prison for his crimes. Fortunately for terrible researchers, that just means he's now inside of this PNG on my hard drive. But like Dr. Alam Gear, I'm sure he'll be emboldened to continue publishing without any consequences from within the confines of science prison. Maybe there'll even be a collaborative publication, perhaps hydrogels combined with nanoparticles and interfering RNA... Uh, can cure arthritis, maybe. Let's leave these fine gentlemen to get to work and figure that one out. So, yeah, that's the uh, second or third episode of Science Police. Depends how you want to count it. Image manipulation was in the news recently. There were some, even some popular videos on YouTube discussing uh, this problem in Alzheimer's research. So there are surely people who want to see content like this. And, and all of what I've shown here is original stuff. I found all of these errors myself and edited the video. So if you like this and you want to see more Go ahead and share the video, it'd be nice if people watched it, but I'm not fussed, I'll keep going anyway. Yeah, I haven't been uploading as much recently, uh, reason for that is being busy at work, uh, less energy for YouTube, um, I spent a fair bit of time on other stuff, but I'll be back, I'll keep going. Alright, and thanks to everyone who always watches my videos, leaves comments, I always read them and I really enjoy it, um, talking to you guys, so catch you soon.